dobry, moim gościem jest Mark Weiser, reżyser filmu Obóz 14, Strefa Totalnej Kontroli. Mark, when we think about the labor camps or the concentration camps, we think about Nazi or Stalin's times. And you are showing us that actually the impossible times of the apocalypse, they do still exist in Korea. True, they are still existing and there was a, for me, very shocking experience I made. I was sitting at home and I was using just a regular computer, okay? And I was just using Google Earth and put in camp and a number, the next town in North Korea in English. And the picture was moving and suddenly I could see the camp live. And I was sitting there and said, wow, how cynic is that? These camps are existing. There are 200,000 people in the camps. They are living under horrible, unbelievable conditions. They are dying in that moment and I can watch it live. I mean, just try to imagine you would have had the chance to watch Auschwitz live. Yeah, this is, this is very cynical yeah. and very... And for me it was shocking too, but I mean, my motivation to tell this story was the fact that Shin was born there. Because in comparison, for example, to Nelson Mandela, who was 25 years in jail, but he had a life before, so he had an idea of freedom. He had an idea what he can wish. And Shin was born there. He had no idea. He, said, he always told me, well, Mark, I was aware that behind the fence is a world. The camps are big, and his camps were around 40,000 people. And he said, I was very aware there's a world behind. But he's always believed it's the same world. He thought the whole world is a camp. So, and that was for me really very, very interesting to go into his story and to find out what this has done with him. That this system, who was in a way just brainwashing him from the first day of his life, 24 years. He had no idea what is outside. That was very interesting and very important. He never had done something wrong. He's innocent. He's just born and from the first day he's a political prisoner. And it's a death camp. You are never released. If you are in such a camp, there are two types of camps in North Korea. So there are camps where you are re-educated. You can be released after three, five, seven years. In the total control zone camps, you are never released. If you are one time in, you are dying in there. Shin is the only known case of somebody who had managed to escape out of such a camp. Perhaps there are others, but you, we know nothing about it. Shin is worldwide the only well-known case of somebody who had managed to escape out of the total control zone. So you work a bit like the Google Earth you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So do you want to be like the messenger of peace with your previous movie? You also won an award of the um, Cinema of Peace Award. So do you want to show us um, that this world do exist? Do you find it as your mission? Do you consider yourself as a... Well, of course, I mean, friends are always kidding. You never make a funny film, you know, like that. It's always like that. I started in Bosnia in 96, in the Bosnian war. And from that day, I'm making film about war crimes, war criminals. But I'm coming from the other end. It's more, it's not my motivation to say, well, I want to make a better world or like that. Or I'm not a peace missionary, no. I just see a story. And this story, I can feel it in my stomach. And it's just amazing me so much that I say in, in a minute I want to tell the world this story so in a way I'm a storyteller and of course it is like that if you have war in the background if you have death in the background I was in the Belfast I was in the Intifada second Intifada in Palestine and so on and so on I mean for a filmmaker it's, it's, it's huge stuff you can tell a lot and to tell the world by a story like Shin, these camps are existing, yes, it's important. Because the only moment the world was looking at the camps were as two American journalists were in. From the day they were out, it just disappeared again. And, I mean, yes, it's important. And it's like, I always use the metaphor of a huge puzzle with millions of pieces. And a film is just one piece. 
But I mean, sometimes you have the trial trials in Hague, these human rights courts. It can help. And if there is one day a uh, human rights courts about North Korea established, I mean, they just have to use the interviews of the two guards and they can sentence them. They, ad they admit how they kill people. The one guard is sitting there and say, hey, if I want to keep clean hands, I just took eight prisoners and say you have to kill one of yourself. If you are not doing it, I'll kill you all. He's, the other is telling how he raped the women, how he tortured the people. And they just say, well, they were for us like a worm. We killed them. In a way, I don't want to accept that, that this is existing, no. This is unacceptable, but when I was watching this film and I've seen these interviews with the guards, I've been having the impression that they are also a victims of the system. True. In the end, it's no prison film. It's, it's a film about three human beings who were brainwashed and built up by a system. True. But I always like to say in the end, you have to be able to do it. I mean, even if you are brainwashed. And by the way, that was the reason why I found it very important to show the one guard in the family, to make clear, hey, he's a family father. Because if you just watch the interview, you think he's a monster, like Hannibal Lecter or something like that. Yeah. But you realize, wow, he has a boy, he has a little son, he has a wife, he's a family father. He could be one of them, you know? Only the system made it out of him. But you have the level of personal responsibility too. I mean, you have to be able to kill a woman you have raped before because she got pregnant. You have to be able to kill prisoners for nothing. So I don't want to excuse him with the system. But of course you have the parallel. And uh, the film was on the Toronto Film Festival too. There was a film about Hannah Arendt by Margarete von Trotta. And Camp 14 and Hannah Arendt were always brought together in Toronto. And they had footage of this trial in Jerusalem against Adolf Eichmann. And as I made the interviews with these guards, it reminded me a lot. After five minutes, I thought they are like these Nazi guys. They are like Eichmann, who was sitting there, you know, sued and so on, and they are sitting there. Well, it was my task, just to kill all these people.